Assalamu alaikum and hi everyone. Welcome to the second part of the video where I am going to show you the atypical calculations in cellular respirations. From the first part of our video, okay, the first stage of cellular respiration, which is glycolysis, we know that two molecules of ATPs are being produced and also two molecules of NADH as well. Okay, so this NADH molecules will later on go for oxidative phosphorylation uh, in order to, to produce ATP molecules. After glycolysis, we have pyruvate oxidation. Okay, in this uh, part of cellular respiration, no ATPs are being produced, but we do have two molecules of NADH generated. Okay. After pyruvate oxidation, we have citric acid cycle. In citric acid cycles, we have two molecules of ATPs being produced, 6-NADH and 2-FADH2 molecules are being produced. Okay, so the number of ATPs produced okay, in glycolysis in Krebs cycle this is pretty direct okay, because we already get ATPs from that. Okay, so now the NADH molecules and also FADH2 will go will undergo oxidative phosphorylation okay, in order to generate ATPs. The NADH and FADH2 that are already located in the mitochondria can go straight away for electron transport chain and chemiosmosis and ATP will be generated. Okay. The question is, we have two molecules of NADH okay, that is located inside the cytosol. Okay. So, the NADH molecule needs to be transported into the mitochondria. so that it can go to electron transport chain and chemiosmosis for ATP production. However, one characteristic of a mitochondrial membrane is that they are impermeable to NADH from cytosol. Okay, It means that the NADH from cytosol cannot enter the mitochondria. Okay, so it cannot pass through mitochondrial membrane and get into the matrix. Okay. But we know that this 2-NADH carries electron. Okay? And this electron is important for our ATP generation in oxidative phosphorylation. Okay. So what happens is, instead of, uh, instead of transporting NADH from cytosol into the mitochondria, what happens is, only the electron will cross the uh, will cross the the mitochondrial membrane. Okay. Only the electron will cross the mitochondrial membrane and inside the mitochondria, they have two types of internal shuttle. Okay. So this internal shuttle is the one that will accept the electron. Okay. So the first internal shuttle, we have myelid aspartate shuttle Okay, so in the form of NAD+. Plus. Okay. If the myelid aspartate shuttle receive the electrons, they get reduced, they will become 2 NADH molecule. Okay, so this NADH molecule will be transported, so they will undergo, they, uh, they will be transported to electron transport chain and uh, undergo chemiosmosis to produce ATP. Okay. The second internal shuttle in mitochondria, we have glycerol phosphate shuttle, okay, which is in the form of FAD molecule. Okay, so I so they need two molecules because we have electrons from two NADH. Okay, so the receiver should be two electron carriers as well. Okay. If the electron is uh, received by the second shuttle, the glycerol phosphate shuttle, the two molecules of FAD will be reduced into two molecules of FADH2. Okay. These FADH2 molecules will be transported to electron transport chain, undergo chemiosmosis, and ATP will be generated. Okay. So you have to remember, the electron will be received 
either one okay either by malate aspartate or glycerol phosphate okay so not both receive at the same time it's either one okay so those two types of uh, shuttle we have malate aspartate which is the nad plus okay so when the nad plus receive the electron they get reduced they become nadh so this molecule of NADH will be transported to electron transport chain or the electron from cytosol will be received by glycerol phosphate shuttle which is this FAD molecule. They get reduced, they become FADH2 and also will be transported to electron transport chain. Okay. So how do we know uh, the electron will be received by malate aspartate shuttle or by glycerol phosphate shuttle? Okay. It depends on the location of the cell. Okay. If the cell is in liver, kidney and heart, the electron will be received by malate aspartate shuttle. If the, uh, if the cell is located in the muscles, skeletal muscles or in brain, the electron from the cytosol will be accepted by glycerol phosphate shuttle okay so that's why it doesn't happen both at the same time okay so this is something really important for you to know okay once all of those nadh and fadh2 molecule uh, gets to electron transport chain okay and then they undergo chemical osmosis so atp will be generated Okay, so now we need to know how many ATPs can be generated from one molecule of NADH and one molecule of FADH2. One molecule of NADH can produce 2.5 molecules of ATP. Okay, while one FADH2 molecule can produce 1.5 ATP. Okay, so for the purpose of this course, you just have to know this number. Okay, how it happens, okay, that, um, that is for your uh, degree level studies. Okay, so since we know uh, one NADH can produce 2.5 ATPs and one FADH2 can produce 1.5 ATPs, now we can calculate the total number of ATPs being produced from one molecule of glucose okay so these are the these are the total number of nadh and fadh2 that has already located in the mitochondria okay so these eight nadh comes from pyruvate oxidation okay so where it produced two nadh okay and the other six comes from Krebs cycle. So we know that we have 8 NADH, you multiply it by 2.5 ATP, so we get 20 ATPs. Okay. These two molecules of FADH2 only comes from Krebs cycle. Okay. So we, mu we multiply 2 molecules of FADH2 with 1.5 ATP, so we get 3 ATPs. Okay, so this comes from NADH and FADH2 from pyruvate oxidation and Krebs cycle. Okay. So you have to remember, we have two more NADH molecule from glycolysis. Okay. So once it has been transported into mitochondria, we have the malate aspartate shuttle or we have the glycerol phosphate shuttle. Okay. If the electron from 2 NADH is being received by malate aspartate shuttle, the total number of ATP produces 5 ATP okay. because we have 2 NADH multiplied by 2.5 ATP. Okay. So how do we get this? 2 NADH times 2.5 ATP. So we got 5 ATP. If the electron from... 2 NADH is being received by glycerol phosphate shuttle. Okay, so it will be received by 2 FADH2 molecule. So we multiply it by 1.5 ATP. Okay, so there will be 3 ATP produced. Okay, 
So when we calculate the number of ATP, we do have two values. Okay, either 5 ATP or 3 ATP. Now, if we total up the number of ATP produced during oxidative phosphorylation, okay, so we will get 20 ATP plus 3 ATP plus 5 ATP. Okay, so we have 28 Or, if the electron is being accepted by glycerol phosphate shuttle, we have 20 ATP plus 3 ATP plus 3 ATP. So, we got 26 ATP. Okay, so the value is either 26 or 28. Okay, so these are the electrons generated from oxidative phosphorylation, okay, from chemiosmosis. And if you go back in gly uh, glycolysis and Krebs cycle, you remember that we have uh, other ATP molecules being generated through substrate level phosphorylation. Okay, so these are the total number of ATP produced. Okay, we have two molecules of ATP being produced from substrate level phosphorylation. And then we have two NADH which will undergo oxidative phosphorylation in mitochondria. If it is accepted by, if the electron is being accepted by Marit aspartate shuttle, so electron produced is 5, or if the electron is accepted by glycerol phosphate shuttle, you produce 3 ATP. Okay, from uh, previous slides calculation. In pyruvate oxidation, Two molecules of NADH being produced. So if you multiply by 2.5, we have 5 ATPs. Okay. In Krebs cycle, we have two molecules of ATP being produced through substrate level phosphorylation. Okay. And then we have 6 NADH multiplied by 2.5, we got 15. And 2 FADH2 molecule multiplied by 1.5, you will get 3 ATP. So if you total up the number, okay, so you will get 30 or 32 ATP. Okay, so remember, calculate this or this. Okay. So this slide shows the summaries of the number of ATP produced. Okay, so we have two ATPs due to substrate level phosphorylation. 2 NADH will be transported either to NADH carrier or FADH2 carrier and then they will be transported to electron transport chain and then we have 2 NADH from pyruvate oxidation, 6 from Krebs cycle, 2 FADH2 from Krebs cycle 2. Okay, so from oxidative phosphorylation we have about 26 or 28 ATPs and from Krebs cycle we also have two ATP being produced, okay, as I said before, in step number five. Okay, and if you add them together, we got about 30 and 32 ATP being produced from one molecule of glucose. And if you look at the numbers, you would see that uh, the number of ATP being produced, okay, a lot of them are being produced during oxidative phosphorylation which happens in mitochondria and you know from previous semester the function of mitochondria is to produce uh, to generate energy to generate ATP so this is the process of generating ATP in mitochondria okay, okay so that is all for um, this video I really hope you understand about this uh, calculation. You can um, try do these exercises. Okay, so for uh, other classes, you can do these exercises and you can um, give them to your lecturer to check. Okay, and that is all. Thank you. <music>